What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yes another crazy day here in the world of crypto so bitcoin continues to go down in today's video we are going to be discussing exactly what i'm doing and some very very key dates that we need to watch going forward into this month now with that said there are also a bunch of news articles and things that we're going to be going through so you guys can be fully up to date with what's happening in the world of crypto and if you don't know me already my name's connor and i am not a financial advisor i'm just a guy sitting in stephen clark's room talking about different ways to make money online so if you like the sort of thing you could consider smashing the subscribe button because it's really going to help me out and let's jump straight on to today's video first of all i want to start with this but um uh, i it could go to zero it's a binary outcome right it's either going to go to a million dollars of bitcoin or zeroed uh it's going to be one or the other which is why you shouldn't put everything there um uh, this reminds me a lot of 1999 Right, we're in that phase, and what came out of that, uh, eBay and Amazon and all sorts of interesting businesses came out of the dot-com sort of 1.0 era, mm -hmm. and a bunch of it went to zero, and I think that will probably be true of what we see here. That doesn't mean the innovation isn't real, and it's not going to play an important role in our collective future. Uh, Brock, before we go, are, what other cryptos are you buying other than Bitcoin or that you own? Well, I, a bunch of them. Uh, right now, obviously, the conversation is about Ethereum and their upgrading to, to proof of stake. I famously just made a, a nine-figure bet on EOS. Uh, I converted all of my block one shares into that. That's public. Uh, and beyond that, I, I'm, I'm very interested in what's happening within the NFT market. Uh, I was a part of the NFT.com purchase and launch. So you heard that the crypto billionaire is investing in Ethereum and EOS and also very interested in NFT.com. Interesting takeaway from there. And like he was saying, I totally agree with the fact that we need to not have all of our eggs in one basket. For me, of course, my biggest basket is in fact Bitcoin and I'm going to continue to stack into that but spreading our bets and looking at this as an opportunity like the dot-com bubble where there was hundreds if not thousands of companies all in the internet space right this was these were new companies all in the internet space all doing similar but different things right in the same space and only a few of them made it out and that's exactly what's most likely going to happen here with crypto so you need to go out and do your research into different coins and decide which ones you think are going to be around for the long term for me of course it's Bitcoin, then again, Ethereum as well. Solana is one of them. Potentially Dogecoin just as a community coin with no other utility apart from people sending it to each other. We got Tokadot, we got Polkadot definitely there. I'm having some reservations, honestly, about AVAX. I've been trying to use it recently with Aave. I do use Aave. I stake my Bitcoin there. That gives me, and then I take a loan on Aave and I use that loan to then stake. So then I get, so then I generate a passive income in a decentralized manner using my Bitcoin. But I've had some problems just using the network, which is making me a little bit worried about the project itself. BNB still holds up easily no problem in this current market situation. I can still transact on it with no issues. So those are the things that I'm kind of a little bit worried about and definitely seeing in the market. I still think CRO is going to do very well going forward. And there are a number of different coins that I talk about consistently on the channel. ApeCoin may even become the next, you know, Shiba Inu, Dogecoin sort of coin, the one that leads the pack. That's what I'm hoping. I watched this coin very closely to see what it's doing if apecoin is down normally the rest of the market is down if apecoin starts to pump normally it leads the charge in the last few weeks or so so those are the things that i'm watching here on and talk about these dates that we need to watch so we have the cpi consumer price index information coming out on the 11th of may this is very important to see where we stand like we saw with the rate hikes if we do see good cpi data come out i think the market will act accordingly and bounce for the short term if it's worse than what people expect I think the market is going to go down. Now, with the Bitcoin chart, we can see this sideways action, and it does look very similar to here, May to July. It's a little bit longer now, but very similar price movements. We go up, we slam back down. We go up, we slam back down. This is the bulls fighting the bears until eventually there is a break to the upside, which is hopefully what will happen here. But don't forget, we can still have a break to the downside. Now, if we do just check out this on a much larger scale, to me, this still looks like an uptrend. We got a higher high here, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low. But in order for this to play out, we're going to need for it to break $69,000. Now that might come in the next few weeks, next few months, blah, blah, blah. But if we do break down below the thirty-three dollars to $34,000 mark, that would invalidate this longer term bull trend right here. So 
That's what we're seeing on Bitcoin. I think we're still in that short term. We did break below the, the levels that I was watching. So short term, I think the market is pretty bearish. Of course, during this bearish market, when we are in this extreme fear stance, I am still dollar cost averaging, as I say every day, into those positions that I believe in the most according to history. It's always a good investment, right? But that's just according to history. It doesn't mean that we're definitely going to make gains from here. So remember, May 11th is a, is a very important date. You need to act before this date. You need to decide what you're doing before this date because there's an opportunity there up or down, right? We can short the market. We can long the market, that sort of stuff. Now, moving on, we also have Peter Schiff warns economic downturn in the US will be much worse than the Great Depression. This is definitely something that could happen. The whole market can go down a lot. We can have housing crashes. We can have so much happening and that's something that we need to prepare for. In a market like this, I think it is a good idea to have cash reserves. I personally have over 30%, I think it's maybe even 40% now, in cash ready to buy the dips. I've been take, I've been scaling back my more risky plays in the cryptocurrency market and moving that money into much less risk, in my opinion. So that's buying Bitcoin, and also I've been starting to buy heavily in the stock market. I bought Amazon just the other day because we had a 7% crash in one day for a billion dollars company, which I think is, you know, opportunity, right? But of course, the whole market can downturn. I am fully bracing myself and expecting for, let's say, a 50% reduction in price across the board. Now, that is almost wishful thinking, and that would be so much opportunity. I guarantee you, if that happened, it would be super scary in the short term, but we would look back on that in like five years and be like, what an amazing opportunity. If you do remember what it was like back in the Rona Ronason crash, right? Back here when the whole market crashed 50%, and I am talking about the whole market, not just Bitcoin, but we see it play out in the Bitcoin chart here. You can see the crash was heavy, it was scary. I was there and I bought right there. And again, the best trade of my whole life. So that's what I'm planning for. Whether or not it plays out the same way, I do not know. But I'm going to continue just sticking to the same game plan I've had for the last five years. And it's worked out perfectly. In fact, if we do check out this tweet here by Willy Woo, he, this, is, this is the chart he calls, we are still early. And he, according to him, holding for four years, Bitcoin has always outperformed every other asset class. Always. Zooming out, things become clear. Right here, we can see that Bitcoin is outperforming all other asset classes. And that's why I am just pumping my money into Bitcoin, but on a safe scale, right? This isn't money that I need to survive. This is money that I can do without for the next five years. And if history plays itself out, we are still going to outperform the rest of the market. So on top of that, in the bearish news, we also have an almost no retail investors investing anymore, right? We always see so many tweets, so many videos called buy the dip in moments like this, right? Around here, we got buy the dip. Around here, we got buy the dip. Around here, we got buy the dip. And then after a few months, people People get bored, people get scared, people sell and they move away. I am still buying the dip, right? I'm still blabbering on about buying the dip, but most retail investors are not anymore. And that is signs to me that volatility may very well settle down. People may very well stop having so many opened longs. Like if we check out this, we only had $56 million worth of wrecked liquidations, which means there is less margin trading happening in the market, which is definitely a good thing, right? Now, with that said, let's move on to a little bit of good news, right? We do have something to look forward to. We do have the next halving, and a lot of people are very bullish about halvings, right? After the, after the next halving currently scheduled to take place in Q2 2024, so we've got about two years, Bitcoin supply rate will decrease by 50% likely causing a supply shock. Currently, roughly 90% of the 21 million Bitcoin has been mined and less than 7% of the total supply. 7% of the total supply will be available as the network kicks off its fourth halving cycle in two years. I think this is hugely bullish for crypto. I think that having so much less supply in the market will inevitably pump the price just like it has done every time in history. I'm not going to go through that too much now, but I do think this is very, very bullish for the market. And this is the kind of time frame you need to wait for. Can can you stick out another two years? Can you focus on other things in life that bring you more income, that you can invest into projects and companies that you believe in during this economic downturn? Because that is when, in my opinion, actually, according to history, the most amount of money is always made. I can't I can't stress that enough. Anyway, Terra beats Tesla as the second largest corporate Bitcoin holder after $1.5 billion purchase. So they are buying, Terra Luna are buying up the Bitcoin like crazy. TRX, Tron, and Justin Sun are potentially going to start doing that as well. 
and a lot of other companies continuing to buy Bitcoin is going to reduce the supply on the market, again, resulting in another potential supply shock. So we got the SEC approves another futures ETF by Valkyrie. Just another little piece of bullish news. I'm still hoping we're going to get that spot ETF anytime soon. And that, again, will be very good for the market. And we also have the first Portuguese home purchase directly using three Bitcoin. So this was never settled in cash. It wasn't a case of, you know, someone sent Bitcoin to an address. That address then cashed out into fiat and then gave the money to the buyer or the seller or whatever. This was directly done with Bitcoin. So just a historic moment for Bitcoin and Portugal. So very nice to see. And just lastly, to check out this tweet, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Disney, Hulu and Bank of America are all hiring for crypto jobs right now. So if that doesn't sound bullish to you guys, I'm not sure what is. Anyway, you guys have to zoom out, chill out, make decisions for yourself, go out and research and make the best of the moment that we're in right now. We don't have crazy pumps to truck to chase right now. So we have time to focus, to research and learn as much as we can, getting ready for potentially the next bull run, which may happen after the next halving. So in two years. So make this time as valuable as possible. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Whoosh.